I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my Father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you, and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Christ. In our prayers today, let us remember the sick and the suffering and all people for whom our prayers are offered. I'll ask special prayers for Richard Vanderpool, who's the pastor at Halsey Valley Church, and he's been having health issues, and now he's got some blockages that will have to be surgically taken care of, so um, very soon, probably this week, so... Dick has pastored the people in Halsey Valley for a long time and has prayed for everyone and anyone, and it's our turn to pray for him. So we certainly wish him well. We pray for the repose of the souls of those who have died, especially George Overbaugh, who was very active in the Caroline Center Church, and Joan Walker, who died this week also. My son Lloyd is having another back neck surgery on the 12th of Wednesday. On this Wednesday? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Lloyd Quick, Jr. Hmm? Is he Jr.? Lloyd? Well, he has a third, fourth, fifth, sixth vertebrae. Right, right, but is he, he Lloyd Quick, Jr.? Is he Jr.? Okay. And our own organist, Dave, is having surgery on Thursday for hernia and gallbladder. He's been having problems for a long time, so they're doing surgery on um, Thursday. I told him to pay no attention that that's Ascension Day. So, uh, <laughs> so don't pay any attention to that. So... Uh, <laughs> Are there other announcements? Thank you. Anything else? Best wishes, David, in your surgery. It will be fine. You're taking a nice nurse with you, I guess, so you'll be well attended. I won't go, being a licensed funeral director, I just will stay home, I think. But I'll pray for you. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day to you women. Whether you've been biologically a mother, I'm sure that there's been times you've called on, have been called on spiritually to be a mother. And so thank you for all you've done for creation. Like I told a priest once who didn't feel that women should be serving the altar of God as a minister. And I asked him if he could just explain to me how he got here. And uh, I think a woman serves the altar of God in many, many, many ways. It's a job I wouldn't want being a mother. It's 24-7 uh, for a lifetime. Because even if your kids get old, you still have the worries of a mother. <clears throat> this week, the, a movie is coming out, I think it came out last night, called Fatima, which is the story of three children in Fatima, Portugal, who in 1917, I think it was, they had an apparition of the Blessed Mother and several apparitions of the Blessed Mother. And the Blessed Mother told them things that actually came to pass. And of course there was a lot of upset, a lot of turmoil, a lot of chaos, 
where you had the believers versus the non-believers. And I was, I don't write on um, Facebook, but I was following some of the things last night that people were saying and how some people were so enthralled with the movie. It renewed their faith. It gave them hope. It gave them an understanding that there will be things that happen beyond our comprehension and beyond this world. Then other people who profess to be devout Christians said that it was wrong for them to go to the movies, that it was, it was sacrilege because they were holding the Blessed Mother um, higher than Jesus, and it was nothing like that at all from what I can see. I'm going to go see the movie this week, and I encourage you to do so. And it's interesting that it came out this weekend on Mother's Day. You all know I have a deep devotion to the Blessed Mother. And simply because throughout my childhood and even after my mother's death, her wisdom seems to remain with me. And some of her sayings and some of the things that she did. And a mother's love is always there even long after she is gone. Mothers have that intuition about them where they know their children very well. My mother knew me very well and told me things that I had done that she had no way of knowing other than mother's intuition. But it makes sense to me that mothers would have an extra sense of intuition because they bring a child into the world and they have to help that child to survive and to thrive in this life. So she has to be aware of all the good and evil that is going on in the world around us. And I know now that as I think back on my life, I know my mother would probably say to me, I wish you would have listened to me. And I'm sure some of you here probably have mothers that would say, I wish you would have listened to me. But yet, a mother's love is a wonderful love because it's probably the closest we get to unconditional love. And I... I've seen times where a mother's love had to be tough love. And they have to allow their children, their offspring, to create their own spirit. And sometimes that's so hard to do. As adults, we want to steer them in the right direction. But sometimes we have to let them go in a wrong direction so that they end up in the right place. Sounds peculiar, but that's the way it is. As we all sit here today, we all have learned through life's experiences what God talks about through Jesus Christ in the Lord's Prayer. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And how often in our life have we been led by temptation that could have ended up in a very bad way for us? But for the grace of God go I, is often a saying. And that's when God suddenly allows us to come to an understanding of the differences between good and evil, right and wrong. And our mothers have told us, but then their love was strong enough to allow them to become who they were meant to become. I knew that my mother loved me. I also could 
name a few times when she didn't like me. But she always loved me. And that's what I think about the three kids, the innocence of youth, seeing the Blessed Mother just prior to World War I, at the onset of World War I, at a time when the world needed a mother's love. And these children, in the innocence of their childhood, were able to convey the love of the Blessed Mother to the world around us. We don't make the Blessed Mother higher than Christ. But we do know that the Mother's love is what maintained Christ for us. A few weeks ago we did the Stations of the Cross. And one of the saddest parts of the Station of the Cross, but yet so endearing, is when they lay his body in the arms of his mother. And it's such a sorrowful time, but yet it's a time when you can feel God's love abounds, and that we continue to walk in God's love. As you celebrate Mother's Day, whether you've had children or don't have children, I can assure you that there's somebody that looked at you as a mother, for your wisdom and your advice, your compassion, your love. I can assure you that. I've had many people that have become, come into the role of motherhood in my life. My mother died when I was 20. But so many of them have been in the role of mother to me. Each of them with different wisdom. Each of them with a different personality. And each of them shook their finger at me in a different way. And it was at a time when I needed that. So love abounds. And we are here because God chose somebody to be a mother. We are here because of their intuition in keeping us going and giving us their guidance and knowing the difference between right and wrong. So let us go forth in peace today to take that love out into the world as our mothers taught us. Amen. Let us share together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last name. Amen. The baskets in the narthex for your donations, if you want to leave a donation, on the way out, it's very well received. Let us remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. Our offer for reading is number 367, the verse 1, 2, and 3.
Lord, we ask your blessing upon this bread and this wine that it may become for us the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we ask God's blessing in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us prepare ourselves to receive the sacrament of this Holy Communion as we pray for all of Christ's Church and the world. God, we come before your altar this day asking for forgiveness for any sins or offenses that we have done against you, our God, against your creation, against our neighbors, or against ourselves. We ask forgiveness for these our sins. We give thanks for all that you have given us, for our family and for our friends, for our church and our parish family, for our community, the state, the nation, and the world in which we live. Help us to preserve your creation for the generations yet to come, that they too may be partakers of your kingdom here on earth as in heaven. We pray for all people who cannot be with us, especially for the sick and the suffering, and for all people for whom our prayers are now desired. Alyssa Vanderpool, Dorothy Meadow, Donald Lesh, Bethel Donald, Steve Frazier, Ann Price, Galio Smoika, Nancy Zamoyski, Amy Zamoyski, Kathy Garrett, George Bowen, Jerry Gentilly, Cynthia Halstead, Katie Ahart, Katie Smith, Larry Pataki, Jackie Pataki, Cindy Burdick, Terry Collins, Joseph Robert Cass, Ward Hungerford, Jack Carr, Richard Vinskoy, Gloria Kunzman, Bob Wilcox, Mary Burkle, Greg, Jean Thomas, Martha Brewster, Bill Palmer, Sally Marks, Ed Gilbert, John, Betty Pierce, Gavin Pataki, Letha Shaler, Mike Scorsese, Monica Padgett, Tom Smith, Pamela Whitehill, Emma Burkle, John Irving, Penny Wilson, Marty Deutsch, Patty Van Gorder, Butch Stammer, Arlene Birch Coleman, Virginia Johnson, Jeff Jeffords, Lou Liguri, Joanne Conrad, Judy Kozel, Red Sicker, Richard Vanderpool, Carol Sorrell, Ann Frisbee, Nancy Evans, Mike Grover, Lori Lewis, Heidi McNeil, Becky Coons, David Jackson, Lloyd Quick Jr. We trust your faith that you will touch them with your healing power. We pray this day for all those who have died in the hope of the resurrection. We pray especially for George Overbaugh, Joan Walker, Paul Jans. We trust your faith that you have opened your arms in love and mercy and have received them into your heavenly kingdom. Be with their families and friends as they mourn their loss, that their empty hearts may be filled with the consolation of your love the joyful memories they have shared throughout the years. And now together let us confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in our thoughts, in our words, and in our deeds. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We seek forgiveness for these our sins, and are heartily sorry for these our wrongdoings. Have mercy on us and forgive us our sins, so that we may return to your path and walk in your ways all our days. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us nod peace to each other here in the chapel, and at home embrace those you love with the embrace of God's love.
When he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, Take ye, this is my body which is given for you. Take and eat this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he shared it among his friends, and he said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, Lord, we present ourselves, our souls and bodies, in reasonable hope to life everlasting, trusting to our faith and our love of you that you shall always be with us, that we can never be alone. Strengthen us with your good spirit that we may come to know your love for us, following the example that you have given us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us all to pray. people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Those who would like to receive the sacraments, if you would come forward.
Let us pray. God, we give you thanks that you have fed us with the spiritual food, the blessed body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Send us out into the world, giving us the things to do that are necessary for your creation. As we offer ourselves to him who died and rose again, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to sing the Hail Mary as Ave Maria in a devotion to the Blessed Mother, but also as a devotion to all of you women. Take the moments of the song and think of your own mother, the things that she taught you, the things that you loved about her, the things she loved about you, things you didn't like about her and things she didn't like about you, but helped you to learn who you are as a person. So let us all think of how we got here on earth and no matter what your relationship with your mother, she bestowed life upon you. So let us remember her. Mm. Pray for 
in thanksgiving for your servant Anne, who went through her procedure and everything seems to be well. We give thanks for your love for us. And help us to continue to walk in faith and love all our days. Amen. Amen. Now the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may he be with us this day and remain with us always. Amen. 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 Our closing song is number 337. We'll do verses 1 and 2.